Hey, y'all. I'm Autumn. And I'm Kimberly. And I'm James. And we're Camper Size Living. We travel full-time in our RV all the way around the country. On our channel, you'll find RV-related tours, upgrades, repairs, and adventures. Today, we're going to check out this awesome cargo trailer conversion with Kevin, the man who created it. Let's go. My name's Kevin and I'm from McCordsville, Indiana. Let's tell us a little bit about the rig. Let's just get into it. Well, this particular uh, cargo trailer, uh, now a conversion, is uh, manufactured by Intech. They're based out of Napanee, Indiana. I've been able to build it to a certain point where I can get it out and use it. And that's what I would stress with anybody. Your build doesn't necessarily have to be 100% before you get out and use it. And I've got it to the point where I have the systems deployed that I need. Before I do specifically cabinetry, I wanna get it out and use it. This is not like a cargo trailer you run to Home Depot and grab. I can't wait to show it to you. It's built like a brick, you know, house. So today we're gonna to go through this entire trailer inside and out, go through all the specs, all the numbers. Kevin is an incredible thinker and an engineer of sorts, not in schooling, but you talk to him for about five minutes and you can tell he's extremely thoughtful and has some really great ideas. The awesome part about this is because the cabinetry is not all the way in yet, you can see all the systems that are laid out in here from the solar, the way he set up his diesel heater to his bed, you name it. So let's go ahead and take a look around the outside and then we'll head on inside. Intech does, for the most part, custom trailers. So my particular trailer, it is a Venos. It is 16 foot overall. The interior is seven and a half foot wide. The height on the inside is seven feet. I'm 340 pounds, six foot four, and I can move around in there, no problem. It feels nice and roomy. So when you purchase your Intech trailer, I would recommend going to IntechTrailers.com. They're 100% aluminum. Everything is 16 on center and everything is bead welded. When I took the wall panels off of this trailer after I got it, every one of the aluminum studs on the inside were exactly 16 on center. Yeah. So when I went to cut my, uh, my, my foam board insulation to go into all those cavities, I cut every one of them pretty much identical. That's awesome. That, that probably really helps out the speed of the build and the consistency of the build. Uh, I made my purchase through RPM Trailer Sales out of Brazelton, Georgia. They have been in this business for a long time. It's a husband and wife business, small business. The process uh, was very, very easy. Your dealer will start off by providing you with actual CAD drawings. You select exactly what options that you want, where you want them precisely. They will make it happen for you. And whether you talk to Brad or any of his associates, they're very proactive in getting you the information you need when you need it. It did take me about eight months, and this was pre-COVID, Honestly, I didn't really care. I knew that this was the trailer for me and that would make it exactly to my specs and it was worth the wait. Uh, the exterior skin of this trailer is very similar to a lot of others. I don't know what gauge it is. I think it's uh, 0 .030. They're aluminum panels. As you can see, it is rivetless. They're adhered to the trailer with um, VHB tape. I didn't have a lot of options included because of what I decided up front were the things that I wanted to include and deploy myself and install. Uh, RPM Trailer Sales put in a, a Dometic awning for me. Uh, I have one window here. There's another one on the other side. That's the uh, exit window. The vents here, this is something that's uh, standard that they recommend for their trailers. And I've got one open on the other side that I'll show you. Uh, this is the standard aluminum fender. It's anodized. You'll see a lot of trim also in this trailer that's anodized. And it really gives it a great look. On top of the fender is a marker light. You'll need to ask for that as well. I did outfit it with a, um, a camera system. So I have a DVR inside that records. And uh, I use different cameras on the sides of the trailer than I did on the ends. It does come with aluminum wheels. What I like about these, that if you need to put a, a chain through one of the spokes, uh, this is a five spoke aluminum 15 inch wheel. The axles, by the way, are Dexter torsion axles. Based on the height that I had asked for, which was 16 inches, they ordered the axles from Dexter uh, to comply with that particular spec. CAR, C-A-R-R, they make some great cast aluminum uh, grab handles. I added one of those. This particular one is the longer one. I put the shorter one on first and it just wasn't long enough. I did add um, AC out here. I have a 32 inch RV door. They have double locks here. The standard is a, a window. It has the separate screen door on the inside. You guys, I don't know if you heard that, but he said he's got a 32 inch door. That is way bigger than most 
RVs that come from a factory have. That's super nice. In our travel trailer that we travel in, half time I gotta about go sideways. I can barely fit my shoulders, but this one here, there's so much room. I don't know what ours is measured, but I, when I first saw it, I said, man, that is way bigger than our travel trailer door. That's a really nice option. They standardly recommend a 36, but because I wanted a little bit more wall space here, they spec'd in a 32 inch door for me. They can do a 36 as well? Yeah. Wow. And on their, lar their longer trailers, I think they can even get up to 48. Now, by the time you get to 48, I don't know that it's actually an RV door with a screen, Right. but you've got it at least uh, you know three door width sizes that you can specify. There's a roller at the top corner. Uh, I'm sure that all of you have seen that, but when you have your awning out, uh, that ensures that the corner of the door doesn't get into the awning. Down here, I did put in an aluminum step. It's just a single step, and then you can get a carpet kit to cover it, but it was fairly easy to install. The step itself is aluminum. The rest of it is steel. Speaking of uh, awnings and the door itself and how they operate, there are two different attachment points at the bottom Okay, so right there. You've got a clear path for the uh, the arm of the awning to come straight out. Uh, the other one down here does the same thing. It's the one I use uh, most frequently. It'll attach into this clip here. That is slick. And so that way you can have it open wide. That wouldn't be possible if the awning arm is out. So that's really awesome. This is pretty standard. You got a cover here to keep, uh, keep the bugs out and it operates just like any other. This is one of the options that I added. You'll see these door handles pretty readily by a couple different manufacturers. This particular one could not get wide enough for this door. So I added a couple of aluminum plates in here and basically modified it myself. We have a aluminum diamond plate uh, rock guard to stabilize the trailer. I added a couple of scissor jacks up front. It was fairly easy to do. The tongue of the trailer, it's uh, basically a two by six tubular aluminum. You'll see on the tongue that they've added a couple of chain loops now, this is not something I've ever seen on any other trailer. I didn't realize they were there until I got it, but it's just basically a loop so that you can bring your chain back and it'll have something to fasten to instead of them, you know, resting on the ground. So as we come around to this side, a couple things that are really impressive about the trailer construction from Intec. One is this, on your corners, a manufacturer might put the edge of the skin right here at the corner and then put a trim piece there. They can take one piece and it comes all the way around uh, underneath the window here. So up at the top here, I've got uh, another one of those vents. You can have them operate um, and open toward the front or toward the back. This is the other window I had them add. I specified the location of the window. They accommodated the other vent. They actually had to move it from the original CAD drawing. So I went to a company called RecPro. I basically had them make a 14 by 14 inch. Uh, it's basically a baggage door. This is the exhaust for the air conditioner. Okay. And uh, I'll just show you real quick how I open this. Oh, there you go, like Spider-Man. Uh, so I went to Amazon and uh, I found some stainless steel mesh. So I fastened that in from the inside, obviously to keep the bugs out. And then the other camera up there from- Yeah, the other side camera. And this ladder that you just so scaled <laughs> up. <laughs> Look this at is... this thing, like everything else on here. That's like, there's not an RV ladder out there that I would be comfortable climbing my big body up on. But this one, I mean, look at this thing. I would climb up on that. Look at those welds, those are beautiful. Look at how thick that is. I mean, it's like, and it's attached to the stoutest cargo trailer I've ever seen. <laughs> this started off life as a dock ladder. So the reason I did this is because uh, my son and I go to um, uh, road races. I wanted to find a, a, a reliable and very safe way to get up onto the the roof of the trailer for that reason just as uh you know bring our chairs up as a lookout and it really paid dividends too when i put my solar panels up on the top and right. any other work that i needed to do up there when we look at how this thing um is solar powered we'll try and get some footage on top of the cargo trailer to show you how he set all that up as well so when i originally got the uh, uh the dock ladder i knew ahead of time that the hoops that were on the top were gonna to be way too tall. And I took some of the height of those uh, hoops down. With virtually everything on here being aluminum, frame, the body, the ladder, what is the weight of this? The dry weight of the trailer, as delivered, was 2,750 pounds. Okay. That 2,750 pounds is incredibly solid. I cannot overstate how solid this trailer is. Really hope we're able to relay that through the video. So on the back side, first point out, uh, the camera up top, so that's right. the same style camera that I used also in the front. The uh, the red marker lights uh, that they have installed up top, that's pretty much standard fare. You will see two cargo lights that I had them add. 
Okay, right and then there. The other thing as far as uh, lighting, I want to be seen. It's really very important. These are the tail lights that they standardly put on, but they're not in this location. Besides these two here, I had them also add a couple at the top. Nice. Over the roofs of at least all the cars, you can see the lighting, especially most importantly when the brakes go on. <laughs> so we're huge fans of that also. In fact, on our 1991 Ford that you'll see in all of our uh, other videos, I replaced the lenses with brand new ones so that it would be super bright. And then also put in LED bulbs and also those bulbs, when I hit my brakes, they strobe like five times real fast and then go solid as an extra warning just to give whoever's behind me every opportunity to stop. And then I installed those same bulbs in the back of our travel trailer as well. These are the stabilizers for the back. This is an option from the factory that you can choose. That's correct. There's a button on the inside, a spring-loaded button. You basically pull it out. These stabilizers basically telescope up into this column right here. That's pretty awesome. Do they go up pretty well, like flush to the bottom? Yeah, very close. So the last thing are the paddle latches. You don't have the big uh, you know, bar latch that has hinges and everything screwed into the side you know, to make it work. Instead, right. you come up with one, come up with the other. And that's basically all there is to it. That didn't look very hard at all to put down. Yeah, very easy. It looks like it has basically like a garage door style lift system for it. That's correct. Um, they do put um, an aluminum surround around the whole thing so you don't see it. And so that's a nice touch as well. Uh, you know, it was just an awesome, awesome experience getting this thing, uh, you know, configured up front and getting it ordered. Now we're gonna check out the inside of the cargo trailer. Uh, Intec puts a sheet of aluminum on the entire floor for the base goes down. They use nothing but rectangular tube aluminum. They don't use any C channel or any channel aluminum. It's all, all closed in. Right, exactly. This particular floor has a three quarter inch OSB and then on top of that, the rubber coin floor. As you can see, I also opted for airline track. Then there's the D-rings. There's four of them in here. They had them in there okay. originally. I just left them in there. I don't really use them that much. So that's the floor. The other okay. thing I should mention too is the transition between the back gate here and uh, the floor itself is basically a rubber material. I asked about a walkable roof. Okay. They said it will have one. This actually has aluminum trusses. Really? Okay. They take one inch by one and a half inch aluminum. They basically bend it in a jig underneath that on two ends. They weld another one and a half by one inch tall aluminum stick to it. In between there, they weld into place supports that go underneath. So they have those supports welded into place, not only here, but then shorter ones here as the radius gets less. Okay. If I'm describing that correctly. Every 16 on center is one of those aluminum trusses. It was at that point I knew I really had something good. <laughs> You know, you get what you pay for. The other thing that those who are looking at uh, cargo trailer builds, the plywood that they use here is oriented portrait style. So in other words, here is a four foot section right here. Right. So instead of putting them horizontally, uh, a four by eight. So what's the advantage of that? Well, as you build it, it was a lot easier for me. And so when I finished a certain section, I can move on to the next one and only put only have to put a you know a four foot wide section right, right, right. of plywood back on. And then the last thing about this plywood, I have never ever seen three eighths inch thick by four ply plywood. This plywood is four ply. Anytime that you want to use uh, you know your walls to fasten things, you know, for example, here, you can get on Amazon these uh, little D-rings. I use them in quite a few places. So everything that Kevin describes in here, if it's from Amazon, we'll put a link to it on there. If it's from someplace else, we'll try and get links if, if we can, or at least we'll tell you where it came from so you can find it. That way, if there's anything in here you like that you're seeing, including and up to the whole trailer, you could get it and move forward with your project. So I think that's pretty much it on the construction. The back door is, is a very thick door. Yeah, well, it's incredible. It yeah. actually it actually protrudes further into the room. So yeah. I was able to find some. And, and guys, this is, that is, that is just solid, man. That's just crazy solid. So I was able to find some stainless, I'll just call them barrel bolts, if you will. Okay. So you can lock it from the, the hardware inside. Store. Yeah, so when the door comes up, and I can, and there's one on the other side too. So. You have a way to keep from someone locking you in too. In case anybody would ever want to try something like that. So here's the paddle latches okay. I was talking about earlier. I did find a way down here on the door. 
And it's this hole right here. Okay. And that's a rivet nut, by the way. I just, you know, cut to size a uh, corner bracket. I can leave these up. I can put those corner brackets in place. If somebody tries to lock it from the outside, it comes into contact right here. Okay. And it won't let you go any further than this. Well, it came over on you. Right. Okay. Cool. It's got a fire extinguisher right beside the door. It's got some power outlets and some switches. Looks like that's 12 volt for plugging in. Is that right? Yeah, standard 12 volt. And then what's this one here with the numbers on it? 13.3, that looks like a voltage. These are quick charge ports. If you look for, just like what it says at the top there, uh, QC 3.0, it charges at a much higher rate, just like plugging your big brick into the wall and then plug it into your tablet or something right. to that effect. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you got it where it side mounts so it doesn't have to be yeah. flush into the wall. With a wall that's just uh, an inch thick, then plus the plywood. You know, it's pretty difficult to mount something sure. like this. So honestly, um, did now did you get these on Amazon? I'm pretty sure that I did. Yes. Okay. That's good news because I think when we've been boondocking out here in Quartzsite and part of the challenge is keeping your phone charged, your computers charged, that kind of thing. Something like this would be awesome. So I actually think I'm going to look these up myself and I'll put the link in the description down below, but I think I'm going to mount a couple of those around our camper. I'm going to wire them into the 12 volt system from where the lights go through. This switch is for the cargo lights in the back. They provided this switch. Uh, Intech put this in. Okay. I just kind of left it. And then you got your ladder and you got some tie downs. That's the inside of the vent. Yeah. And here's one of the other tie downs also that I use. This is just a blackout curtain from okay. Walmart, by the way. <laughs> so blackout and it's just it's right now it's stapled. just stapled in and Velcroed at the top. So you have these individual, I'll call them uh, airline pucks. Huh. You can get these on Amazon as well. Both these two screws are into an aluminum stud in the wall. Oh, okay. You can buy these uh, in a set of multiples. I use this for one of my storage methods. I have a 250 dirt bike and then I've got that moped outside. Okay, and then you got a wheel chalk there for that. So yeah. You put your dirt bike and the moped. And I can put them side by side right in the space here okay. and still be able to flip my bed down. Awesome. Yeah. Speaking of the bed. Yeah. The source for all my aluminum was from Eagle Moldings out of uh, Minneapolis. Uh, all the stuff I bought was anodized. It's not like a mill finish where it's really shiny. Uh, it has the look that I wanted. I found another bed on uh, uh, the web. The right. only problem with that bed that I found is that it needed the floor to support it. That was out for me. Because down here, I just want to illustrate, I've got a pedestal for a washer and dryer or what have yes, you, right? Sir, look at this. That's and that's a great what idea. I use for some of my storage. I haul two aquatainers full of water right here. When I want to put my bed down, I just take those off. Give I just me use some paracord here. I'll unlatch this side. The whole frame, legs and all, is 38 pounds. see those latches there. Okay, yeah, I got these cool. off of Amazon as well. And also you'll see stuff like this, pencil marks on the wall. <laughs> right, right, right. Those are, those are just reference marks I made for myself. Sign of an artist. And <laughs> I, just never, I just never got the chance to take them all off. So you'll see a bunch of that going on. Yes, and then these, uh, these caps right here, I found these on Amazon too. Okay, all right. cool. This will come straight down. Look at that. And- That's uh, beautiful. Nice and tall too. Just for too. now. A Good lot of what you see in here is a just for now thing. This is one of those, this is a control panel for my diesel heater. I just have this uh, taped up here for now so that the, uh, the sure. bed doesn't uh, conflict with it. But. So is this a twin size or is this a custom? This is a custom basically. So this one is 34 by 76. And, and look at this frame, guys. Can I pull this back? Is that all right? Oh uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Look at that. Kevin's not playing around here. <laughs> my gosh. I would have no problem laying on a bed built like this. This thing is like ridiculously strong. Yeah, in fact, I've, I've been on it without the legs on the floor. Um, really? And that's, I just wanted to try it once, but I also found a source for a six foot aluminum hinge. Like a and giant piano hinge I almost. I used rivet nuts and I uh, used uh, a quarter 20 bolts to attach it to the to all the studs okay. you see there. All so right. I was able to, you know, catch uh, five studs. The These nut. are one and a half inch by one and a half inch. This is one inch by one inch, just extra support. And then I added these for the very first time ever, a pop rivet gun became one of my good friends. <laughs> nice. In this build. So I just took some 1 16th. I took it, uh, you know, through the, um, the brush in my grinder and softened okay. it up a little bit. Back to the mattresses. You'll find all sorts of different sizes out there. And once you find one, what do I do for sheets? Second. So you, you basically use some, like some garter straps or sheet. Yes, sheets. exactly. That's all I use. This is a, a twin fitted sheet. This is my second mattress. The first one, I just didn't like it. It was 99 bucks on Amazon. It wasn't comfortable. And again, it, you get what you pay for. Right. Uh, but if you search on Premier Trucker Mattress, mm -hmm. this one is not cheap. But let me tell you something. 
It's got a lot more memory foam than the other one had. It's very, very comfortable. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. But I mean, it's like very firm, but soft. It's not like a rock or anything, but it definitely is firm. You're not going to probably feel them bars or anything right. like that through this mattress. And I do like the legs. I definitely would feel more comfortable with my weight having legs under me in addition ah. to the wall. And then this kind of stuff you can get on Amazon too. All kinds of little nets and things like that. Pop latch and it folds down nice and easy. All right. Uh, so Kevin, what is this wire up here? Is that waiting for further finishing or is that like 110? Yeah, that's uh, future use. So it is 110. All of the AC or electrical wiring I used in this trailer, first of all, it's stranded. A lot of people say you shouldn't use solid core Romex. You use what you feel comfortable with using. I felt most comfortable using stranded. This wire here is by Ancor. It's spelled A-N-C-O-R. Okay. And it's bolt wire. It's 12-3, stranded, and it's tinned copper because it's for the marine industry. To help with corrosion or something? Right, exactly. I guess you could say I went a little overboard, but I, I also wanted something that was a lot more flexible that I could run. Yep. This ceiling has so many wires. And the stranded gives you that. Yes. The, the stranded over time, especially with movement, it's going to be more durable. I don't know if you can tell yet, but everything that Kevin has had done or has done himself is to like the nth degree. Okay, it's not going to be shortcutted. The only reason you're seeing some of this stuff unfinished is because he's doing it to the nth degree. He's taking it out for a trial run right now for, what, a month or so? Yeah, I'm here in Quartzsite for... Uh... Yeah, perhaps about a month. He's trying it out so that he can make sure that when he puts his cabinetry in and closes his stuff in, it's perfect. I imagine it's going to be immaculate, just like everything underneath this. What do we got down here? This looks like a diesel heater. I decided the best way for me to install mine, and I'm going to stress that, there are so many ways. Right, yes. There, well, there's, there's, there's so many different uh, places where you can put your tank, right. where you can put your pump and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So as you probably already saw, my tank is mounted on the back side of this panel right here. Right, right around here. And how many gallons does that hold? It is 10, 10 liters. liters. 10 liters, okay. So, so two and a half roughly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A full then, tank should give you about 30 hours of runtime on low, something like that. If you put in a diesel heater, I would first recommend uh, the line you saw coming off the tank. Don't use the rubber lines that they provide to you. It's just unpredictable. Where did you get this diesel heater? Off Amazon. Off Amazon, okay. Yeah. Do you I remember what specific off. brand it is? Or? Off the top of my head, no, but uh, yeah, we'll get, we'll get you some. Okay, yeah, just get a hold of me. We'll put a link in the description down below. There's another thing that he has that I'm thinking about adding into our camper. So based on his recommendation here, he said it's been working well for him. I think I'm gonna get one for my camper, so. Yeah, just a couple of quick things. I just had these tied up, you know, for the time being scenario. That's kind of the theme here, right? Yeah. So what you wanna do is you wanna go to your auto parts store and the line that comes off the tank into your filter and then down to the pump itself. And you have a cutoff valve there as well. Right. There's you a little cutoff get... valve and a filter right there. Mm -hmm. And it goes down outside. Right. Well, why is it that it goes outside? Because of the noise. The, the pumps do make some noise. So you put the pump outside. Yeah. So okay. that's what I decided to do. I've seen some where the pump is inside and the tank is outside. I used it the second time and the filter started leaking. The okay. filter that they ship with this, it's a two-piece filter. I've never seen anything like it. It looks like it has a gasket in there and that it comes apart. So I had to go get that one-piece filter. Uh, it worked out really well. Just from the auto parts store? Right. You get the line from the auto parts store. Where did you get the uh, cutoff valve? I think the cutoff switch uh, I also got from uh, Amazon. Okay. So if you have any issues with it, you need to work on it. My filter went bad, but I already had the cutoff, uh, the shutoff switch in there. All the fuel would have drained from my tank. Right, into here. Exactly. Right, and right. That, and that's and that's the main reason why people don't want to. And again, it is what you want to do. I'd like to stress that we are not necessarily professionals. You guys know if you've watched any of our other sort of how-to videos on our channel, they're not necessarily how-to. This is how we're doing it, and you got to do it how you're comfortable with. This is what has worked for us. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And so is that bolted down then? Yeah. Oh, that red substance there? Oh, yeah. I would highly recommend using fire caulk. Does that get hot? Yeah, it will. Now that plate doesn't get any more than 100 degrees, which is not much at all, really. Right, right. It gets hotter than that outside here in the summer. <laughs> then you have an exhaust and then um, an air intake. Let me see if I can show you guys that real quick. We'll jump out here. This is of particular interest to me as well, and I'm sure to a lot of you. All right, we're getting on the ground, y'all. You can see where the fuel comes down there, out to the fuel pump, which looks like it has sort of a 
a rubber mount on it to help with sound. And then it pumps it through there and then back up to the heater. Got plenty of room to prevent the heat from getting to the wood for the exhaust. And the exhaust just feeds out that way. This is that firecock he's talking about. And that makes a lot of sense to have that around there. There's a little bit of a extra um, barrier. And then this must be the air intake here. Yeah. The black line. The black one that goes forward. It looks like it has a bit of a filter or something on there. The pump kind of pulsates. So oh. when it runs, it clicks. Every time it clicks, it's pumping into that line, actually just a drop of diesel fuel. So it goes to the glow plug and it's basically just a really hot chamber on the inside. Okay. And the and fan you, works really can well. Can you set a specific temperature or you set it at a level? No, set it at a level. Okay. I'll come up out of here. Heater. Is the diesel heater what you've been using out here at Quartzsite? Right. Even on its lowest setting, I find myself getting up and shutting it off because really? it gets too warm. Yeah, it gets way too warm. If your ambient outside is uh, 30 degrees, between 30 and 40, you can run it all night on its very lowest setting and be okay. You know, that probably would even ring true in our camper, which is a little bit bigger. You know, 110 heater from Walmart, a little $10 heater will heat our whole camper. Mm -hmm. All right, and what do we have next? I'll just call this my appliance stack. Okay. <laughs> um, 